You know, ensuring we have good data is not a trivial task, and it's something that we're going to continuously have to improve on. But the reason I actually did this is so that we can see how to use the Python Pint package a little bit more in how we're going to end up displaying this to our end users. So what that means is we're going to go ahead and import this Pint package. And down in our recipe ingredient model, I'm going to go ahead and define convert to system. And we'll have the default system being equal to MKS. Now, the two systems that we're going to be using in this case, I'll leave this as pass for a moment, is going to be the MKS system, meter, kilogram, and second, and then imperial as in miles, pounds, and seconds. So this is really the key reason or one of the key reasons to have cleaned up units and a cleaned up quantity as float. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just create a method that we'll call on each one of these to actually convert the system. So with pint in here, we're going to go ahead and initialize a unit registry class. So uReg equals to pint dot unit registry. Now we actually already saw this, but now I can actually pass in a system here. This should be a string and it's going to be whatever this argument is. And so with this uReg, I can use the base units that come in here. So with whatever system it is, it can actually convert things for me. And so what that means is we'll go ahead and say the measurement equals to, well, first of all, we have to get the actual float value, not a string value, but a float value. So it's going to be self dot quantity as float. And then we multiply this by the actual units that we've saved from the U reg. And so we'll go ahead and say U reg and self dot unit, right? So we definitely saw this in the validators already, right? So that's what this was. It was actually getting that single unit and then multiplying our quantity by that single unit will give our quantity in those units. So of course we can print out whatever that is and this should be self dot unit. So we can print out that measurement. And then we can also return the measurement to base units like that, or just the measurement itself, either way. So let's go ahead and start it off with just the measurement itself, okay? And so inside of as MKS, I'll just go ahead and call, let's say measurement equals to self.convert to system. And of course the system is still MKS. Now I can use that same thing inside of Imperial. And of course the system now is just simply Imperial. Now, before we go much further, you know, could we just have this as a function or utility function elsewhere that still does these same things, but it has, you know, a few different like arguments in here instead of making an instance method? And the answer is yes, of course, you could totally take this out of here, uh, but I'm going to leave it in as an instance method just to make it a little bit more simplified. And so now what I'm going to do is return that measurement again on both of these and I'll print them out. And what's gonna happen might surprise you a little bit. So before we get any further, let's take a look what happens. And we can do this by going into the admin and going into these read-only fields. We can actually use as MKS and as Imperial, we can use those instance methods as read-only fields as well. Django admin will know what to do. So if we refresh in here, I actually have a few new ingredient items in here, but then I get this, hey, unsupported operand type, none type and quantity. Now let's remember back to our model and let's remember back to this good old quantity as float. And hey, it can be none. So we have to, we have to make sure that we know about that and just really say if it is none, then we're gonna go ahead and return just an empty string. We could also return none as well. It's kind of, let's leave it in as none. So if that quantity is float, we'll return it back as none. So we save it and we refresh in the admin and this should solve that problem. Now this is yet another reason to be like, okay, well, since I'm doing some conversions now, it probably makes a lot of sense to also have 
the unit as actual or some other field that I auto generate set so that when I do the conversion, it can check whether or not I have a float for the quantity and an actual for the unit. Uh, we aren't gonna worry about that yet, but here we go. Let's go ahead and scroll down a bit. I added some new ingredients in. So grilled chicken's in here with one and a half pounds. And if I scroll down here, it didn't change anything, right? So it actually still used the original quantity. So to change this, what we can do is several things. So I can come in here and do dot two and then say something like kilogram or rather not a bracket, but here we go. Save that. And if I refresh in here now, now it's actually giving me to the kilogram, which is cool. And I would actually want to do the same thing for Imperial uh, in this case that, you know, what if I accidentally or what if I did put in kilograms originally? So in this case, I would want to put it into pounds, right? So this is giving me that conversion. So um, the thing is, I'm going to keep this conversion metric in here. But what I'm not going to keep is this right here. Instead, what I'll do is just do two base units. And then I'll turn this into a string potentially, but we'll just leave it into two base units. Save that and now refresh in here and it's gonna give us the same numbers. Now, the reason it gives us the same numbers is because of this system right here, right? So just, that's all it did, right? So I think that's really, really cool. And now we can actually do these conversions for that user if we were following what their system was or they could just do a drop down of like, hey, I wanna see it as MKS or as Imperial. And of course, yeah, now it works. We have these instance methods to do so or we could just display both of them. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It could literally be both. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave these things out. Okay. So naturally I can also call this and then do that conversion. So if I wanted it like two ounces, right? In this case, I would go ahead and say M equals to self dot convert to system. Doesn't really matter what the system is in this case, right? So, cause if I can do return M and then dot two, and then we say ounces, then it will actually attempt to do that. Oh, not, not square brackets, but parentheses. It will attempt to do that. So there's also a chance that that would fail. Uh, so let's go into the admin and actually bring it in. So two ounces, we refresh in here. And there it is, gives me the ounces. Granted, it's not a great number because it's a float number, I get that. We will worry about that later, but in production, we'd probably just round it to the nearest couple decimal places, not all the way far back, especially with something like this. Okay, cool. So we used ounces here. It just brings it to ounces. And of course, if I actually used ounces here as well, let's say for instance, 24 ounces and you know saved it, it would probably still work or it definitely should still work. And it'd be about the same, right? And it also is showing my pounds. And this time the float number didn't change that much because it wasn't doing any conversion. Uh, but what if I actually change this to something like seconds? Right? 24 seconds, can they be ounces? Right? Obviously, I think you know the answer to that question. Right? So in this case, of course, it can't do that. And this is where obviously we need to learn more about the conversion system for pint. But also then we would have some sort of try block in here too to, to do that kind of conversion. Um, and Pint itself would have a lot of different ways on how we could verify what kind of unit of measure it is, whether it's mass or time. Um, so in this case, I'll just get rid of that. But it's just something to be aware of and also something that, hey, if a user put in seconds as their unit, uh, well, it's still gonna work. It's still gonna show that, right? It's gonna say however many seconds and it's gonna be that. So granted, this is not great for ingredients and it's not great for our data here, um, but it is something that we are currently facing. And so could we change the field for the unit? And the answer of course is yes, we can absolutely change the unit. In fact, we could also add in the system that's the default here. That's another option as well. Now, I don't wanna to go too down the rabbit hole of units and systems and all that yet because you know this is something we'll learn from our users as we go forward. We just wanted something realistic 
and reasonable that we could use right now so that we can then use that data to learn from our users and what they're putting in, right? So if they put an ingredient in here as seconds, well, it's not necessarily invalid, but the design that we put forth might be, and that, that would challenge what our design is and, and allow us to make it better over time based off of user feedback and also how they're actually using the system as well.